It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be constructing triangles given three angle measures or given three side lengths. We're going to determine if we can construct none, infinitely many, or one unique triangle. Here's our lesson today. Our objectives are that you, the student, will be able to use the triangle sum theorem to determine how many triangles can be formed when given three angle measures. You will also be able to use the triangle inequality theorem to determine how many triangles can be formed when given three side lengths. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How many triangles can you draw when given three angle measures? And how about when you're given three side lengths? Triangle sum theorem. This theorem states that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So here is a triangle. Remember that prefix tri means three. So any triangle is going to have three interior angles. If it doesn't have three interior angles, it's not a triangle. It can't have less and it can't have more. So when I consider these three angles and I add them together, angle one, add angle two, add angle three, they must equal have a sum of 180 degrees. If I add up the three angle measures and it does not equal 180 degrees exactly, then it is not a triangle and somebody is trying to trick you. We can prove this by drawing a straight angle. This straight line or straight angle forms a 180 degree angle. So if I come over here and I tear off angle one and line up the side on my line, put the vertex right here, and now let's go tear off the other two, bring angle two over and line up the vertex, tear off three and line up the vertex. When we line up all three vertex where the angle is formed by the two sides coming together, it forms 180 degrees. You could do this at home on a piece of paper. You can draw any size triangle, no matter how big or how small, when you tear off the three angles, they will line up and form a straight angle of 180 degrees. Let's use this theorem. So we're gonna construct a triangle given just two angles. You only need two to construct a triangle and a protractor. So we're given, we're gonna make a 40 degree angle and a 60 degree angle, and just like magic, we're gonna form a triangle. So we're gonna start with step one. Using a protractor, we're gonna construct an angle that is 40 degrees. So we're gonna draw a line segment, and we're gonna put, I'm gonna do it on the left side, you could do it on the right. I'm drawing a little dot here to make my vertex. Now I'm gonna bring in my protractor. Here's my protractor. I'm gonna line up my vertex in the center. Some um, protractors, when you're doing them, they have a little hole in them where you line it up, and some of them, it's your straight edges right here, and you just line it right up here. And then right here, this line where my zero is, I'm going to line that line right up on my line segment. So it's really important that you use a straight edge to draw your line segment. When I'm forming an angle going in this direction, so my 40 degree angle will be right here, I'm gonna be on the inside of my protractor. In a minute, we're going to be going from this way, and we're going to be on the outside of our protractor. All right, again, 40 degrees. We're starting right here, 10, 20, 30, 40. So if I was on paper, I'd make a little mark right here, lift my protractor, and take a straight edge and connect right here from to my vertex, and then label it so you remember what you drew. That's 40 degrees. All right, moving on to step two. Step two, I'm gonna add an endpoint to my line segment here to make my next vertice. And I'm gonna align the protractor to the end of one of the segments. You could have made that right here and done your 60 degree angle off of there. There's no wrong way to do this. So I'm gonna put my protractor over here. And now this time I'm creating or constructing a 60 degree angle. So I want this way right here to be 60 degrees. So I'm gonna be on the outside of the protractor coming from the left. So we're gonna go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, here's my 60. So I'm gonna make a little mark here and connect my line all the way down to my vertex and label my angle. That's really important because once you construct it, you could forget what you just did. So this is my 60 degree. So let's move on. 
This is what my construction looks like when I remove the protractor. And step three, which is not totally necessary, but we're going to erase any extra lines. So I'm going to erase these little lines so I have a perfect triangle. All right, now we need to find the value of that third angle. Well, there are two ways to do this. You could use your protractor and just measure it, but then we're looking at precision. So there's room for hairs of, an, you know, of error. Another way to do it is to use our theorem that we just learned. We know that if we take 40 and we add 60 to it, we're going to get 100 degrees. We know that when we take the sum of these two and add that third angle, 100 plus that unknown amount have to have a sum of 180 degrees. Well, what added to 100 is 180? That's easy, 80 degrees. So we know that that third angle has to be 80 degrees in order for this to be a triangle. So that is how you construct a triangle given two angle measures. Now we're going to apply this to understanding how many unique triangles can be formed with angle measures of 40 degrees, 60 degrees, and 80 degrees. That's the triangle we just constructed. We did, we constructed the 40 degree, and the 60 degree, and it automatically formed that 80 degree angle. So when we talk about how many unique triangles can be formed with these measures, think about being in your math classroom. And maybe there's 20 students in your class. If your teacher gave all of you the same assignment, and you all started off just randomly drawing your own line segment, it's probably unlikely that this first line segment was going to be the same length or any two would be the same. So this was mine. You could have made a smaller one because your initial line segment may have been smaller. Or you could have made one that was bigger because your line segment might have been a little bit longer than mine. No matter what you did compared to what I do or what the other students do, all three of our angles are going to be the same which tells us that there's an infinite amount of possibilities. So when we talk about unique triangles, they would be unique because the side lengths would all be different, right? So that means that there's an unlimited amount of triangles that can be formed when you're given just the angle measures, as long as they have a sum of 180 degrees. Now it's your turn. How many unique triangles can be formed with the angle measures 50 degrees, 50 degrees, and 100 degrees? Don't forget your triangle sum theorem. Just go ahead and pause the video, do your best work, and then come back to see mine. Welcome back. So let's go ahead and add these three angles together. 50 plus 50 is 100. Add another 100 and we get 200 degrees. Uh-oh, they're trying to trick you. So how many unique triangles? None. Since the three angles do not have a sum of 180 degrees, these angles cannot form any unique triangles. So don't be fooled. Now let's talk about the triangle inequality theorem. We're going to start talking about side lengths of triangles. So this theorem states that the sum of any two side lengths of a triangle must be greater than that third side. There's a couple of reasons I'll show you mathematically and visually. So here's a triangle with side lengths three, four, and five. Remember, whenever you're given a picture, it may or may not be accurate, right? They may be trying to fool you. So we're going to verify it with the theorem. So we're going to take any two sides. We're going to do three combinations of this, right? So a pair, a pair, and a pair. So we're going to pick these two as our first pair. So three plus four has to be greater than that third side or it's a rule breaker. Three plus four, seven. Seven is greater than five. So that's not enough. We need to check the other two. So now let's check four and five. So four plus five is nine and that is greater than that third side. So we have a second check, but we have to have a third check. So we've done three and four, four and five. Now we have to do these two sides. So three plus five is eight, and eight is greater than that last side, four. So it checks. So this is indeed a triangle. So when we look at how many unique triangles can be formed with the side measures of four inches, five inches, and 10 inches, 
we're going to try the triangle inequality theorem first. So let's pick our first two. So 4 plus 5 is 9. Oh, we already have a rule breaker. 9 is not greater than 10. So we can already say that no triangle can be formed because if one fails, the whole thing fails. So they have to all be correct to be a triangle. Now let's look at this visually. So this is not true. So let's draw a segment that's four inches, one that's five inches, and one that's 10 inches. Let's start with our longest side. And now we're gonna prop up a four inch segment and a five inch segment. If I had these like straws in front of me on the table and I went to try to meet the four and the five together to make a vertex to form that triangle, the four is just going to collapse and the five is going to collapse because the four plus five is nine and we have this other inch in the middle. So they're not big enough to make that angle up here. They just collapse down. Even if this was five, they wouldn't meet. They might touch right here, but they're not going to meet to form a vertex because they're going to be exactly this. So the four plus five has to be greater than 10 so that when they fall in, they meet before they hit the 10, if that makes any sense. So we can answer this and say, none. There are no unique triangles that can be formed from these side measurements. It's impossible to make a triangle. All right, now it's your turn. How many unique triangles can be formed with side lengths of seven centimeters, seven and a half centimeters, and four and a half centimeters? Go ahead and pause here. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So we're going to use our triangle inequality theorem. Here's our first pair, seven plus seven and a half. Well, seven plus seven is 14 plus another half is 14 and a half. That is indeed greater than four and a half. So that checks. Let's check the last two. So we have seven and a half plus four and a half. Well, sevens are, seven and a half is already greater than seven. So we know when we add them together, it's going to be greater than seven. So another check. One more. We're going to do the first side and the last side. So seven plus four and a half. Is that greater than seven and a half? Indeed it is because seven plus four is 11 plus another half. 11 and a half is greater than seven and a half. So since all three of these statements are true, we have one unique triangle. Since the sum of any two sides is greater than the third, one unique triangle can be formed. So remember, when you're given side lengths, that's very specific. So nothing would be different from yours to another student's in the class if it was these specific side lengths. Our next question here is, a triangle has three sides. Two of the sides are three inches and eight inches. Which is a possible length in inches for the third side of your triangle? And you're given four answer choices. Please pause, do your best work, make your answer choice, and then come back and hit play to see my work. Welcome back. So we're told that two of the three sides are three inches and eight inches. So we know that three plus eight must be greater than that third side length. Three plus eight is 11. So we know that 11 must be greater than that third side. So we want to know, here's 10. Is 11 greater than 10? It is. Is 11 greater than 11? No. Is 11 greater than 12? No. Is 11 greater than 13? No. So we know that the only possible side length that would make this true would be 10, because 11 is only greater than 10. So therefore, that third side from these answer choices, we could make a triangle from in three inches, eight inches, and 10 inches. And our last question for tonight, select one box in each row to determine if the angles or sides in each set can be used together to make one unique triangle, more than one triangle, or no triangle. So we're given two sets of angles and two sets of sides. Go ahead and hit pause and then come back and hit play to check your work against my work. Good luck. Welcome back. So let's go over this. We have three angles right here. So let's add them up. 33 plus 64 plus 83 equals 180. So seeing as the three angles do have a sum of 180 degrees, we know that there's more than one triangle that can be formed. 91 plus 40 
plus 39 has a sum of 170 degrees. Seeing as the three of those angles don't add up to be 180, then we have no triangle that could be formed. So again, if the three angles equal 180 degrees and you're not given any side lengths, we know there's an infinite amount of triangles to be formed. If they don't add up to 180 degrees, no triangle could be formed. Now let's review using sides. So remember, we got to check all three pairs. So we'll start with the first two sides. 6.2 plus 3 has a sum of 9.2. 9.2 is greater than 9. It checks. So now let's check the last two. 3 plus 9 is 12. 12 is greater than 6.2. So it checks. Now let's check the first and the last. 6.2 plus 9 is 15.2, and that is greater than 3. So this one checks, and we're going to have one unique triangle. So remember, if you're given three side lengths and it doesn't fail the triangle inequality theorem, then you're going to have one unique triangle. Now let's do the third. 7 plus 4.6 is 11.6. 11.6 is not greater than 12.1, therefore it fails. And we're going to say no triangle can be formed because these two sides aren't large enough to meet at a vertex when you're given this large segment. So we have an infinite amount of triangles or more than one, no triangle, one triangle, and no triangle. And there you have it. That's what we've learned about constructing triangles given three angle measures or given three side lengths. We could form none, infinitely many, or one unique triangle. I thank you for joining me at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.